Yo, this is Neville Atwood, snowboardaddiction.com. Riding fresh powder is one of the best feelings on a snowboard. Learning to ride power is quite different than groom trails. It takes a lot of energy and different techniques. This vid is an intro to riding powder and will cover some basic techniques to get you ripping. Stance. One of the main differences is where your weight will be positioned over your board. Normally your weight is central with equal weight on both feet. However, in powder, you'll find that the nose of your board gets easily stuck under the snow, bogging you down and stopping you from moving anywhere. Instead, have about 60 to 70% of your weight on your back leg. Don't just lean back. Keep your back up straight and your knees bent to stay well balanced. The idea is to keep your nose just slightly out of the snow without using too much effort. You'll definitely have a burning back leg at the end of an epic power day. Sit up. You can easily improve your power riding by making simple adjustments to your bindings. If you have an all mountain or park board, consider setting your bindings back 1-3 to three inches towards the tail. This will make a dramatic difference and I totally recommend it for your first time in powder. It'll make your day a hell of a lot easier. It does, however, suck the switch right. So if you want to be able to mix it up, doing 180s, landing switch, etc., then keep your stance in its normal position. There's some boards like the Burton Fish and Malolo, which are specifically designed for powder. These boards float without you having to sit back. The stance position is already set back by design, so you'll be ready to rip the deep stuff. Starting out. The first thing you'll need is fresh powder. Find an open, unobstructed slope early in the morning after a fresh snowfall. Go straight down at a reasonably fast speed. The speed will allow your board to float closer to the surface. Don't put too much weight on your front foot, or you may sink the tip of your board and roll forwards. If the snow is light and dry, you can ride it a little more centered, and it's not such a big deal to keep your nose out. As you begin to ride, try to bounce up and down, applying more pressure with your back leg, then sucking it up, similar to Ollie's. Get a rhythm bouncing up and down. This bouncing movement helps to get you moving faster, it'll break the nose out from under deep snow, and it makes turns easier. Turning. Turning in powder is a floaty surfing feel. There's no hard edging, you don't want to dig in and carp. You can quickly dig in your edges on pack snow, but you'll sink and lose speed in powder. Begin with subtle movements. Stay bouncy, imagine lifting your feet to your chest. Then add small side to side movements while keeping your body upright. Initiate your turn when the board is near the surface of the snow, at the top of your bounce. Establish a rhythm of rising up and steering, rise and steer rise and steer until you're turning smoothly back and forth. By bouncing and lightly turning the board, you can float on and through the powder without getting stuck. As you start to ride with more speed, begin to lean into your turns. The speed will help you keep balanced. Speed. One of the most important aspects is to keep your speed up. The faster you ride, the easier it'll be to float and maneuver. As you slow down, you have to position your weight further back and will be more likely to get stuck. Look ahead to plan your route and make sure you don't get caught stranded in flat areas. If you find yourself slowing down, try riding in tracks created by others. Pay attention when moving from a groomed run to deep powder area or vice versa and adjust your weight accordingly. The sudden deceleration or acceleration may result in you falling over or your board sliding out from underneath you. Getting up. Getting up in deep snow can be tricky. Make sure your board isn't buried, otherwise it may be close to impossible to move. Rolling through the snow is sometimes the best way to become unstuck. In general, you'll probably find it easier getting up on the top edge. Trees and obstacles. The snow can hide obstacles like rocks and stumps, so look ahead keeping your knees and ankles flexed. This will help you to absorb and recover from any bumps under the fresh snow. If you're riding through trees, 
always look for the gaps between the trees where you're hidden. If a tree is in the way, it's easy to focus on that tree. The problem here is that if you look at it, it's likely that you'll hit it. Focus on the gaps of where you want to head and keep your speed up. Slashes. Slashes are just like surf. You spray as much snow into the air as possible by turning quickly and applying a bunch of pressure into your back foot. It can also be called a face shot because it's rad when you get snow all up in your face and ride through the spray. You can try the movements on a groove run. With your back hand on the ground, try pushing your board forward and down in front of you like this. Now try it out riding on a groom slope. This is a similar movement to a deep power slash. Apply lots of pressure into your tail. You'll find the nose raising up out of the power. The faster you ride and the more pressure you can put into your back foot, the better your slash will be and the bigger your cloud of sprayed snow. Make sure to try them out both hillside and toe side. They'll feel even cooler if you can find a nice bank or windlet to do it on, kind of like surfing a wave. Powder landings. Landing in powder is actually much harder than landing on park jumps, but it feels rad when you stomp and it's pretty soft which provides a forgiving way to try new tricks. While in the air, your position should be exactly the same as hitting a park jump. Then just as you land, push the board forward under you so that all your weight is over the back foot. The impact of landing pushes your board under the snow, slowing it down but your body's momentum continues to travel forward. If you let your weight go too far forward, then you'll probably ragdoll, which means to be flipped head first into the snow. When you ragdoll, your goggles often come flying off your head or helmet. If they do come off, they're gonna be filled with snow and will probably end up wet and foggy for the rest of the day. So keep your goggle strap tighter than normal. When spinning into power, it's important to stomp with your board straight. Even a subtle angle can send you into a violent rag doll down the landing. Think of how you want to land throughout the whole spin. You've definitely got to have your trick on lock in the park before you take it to the backcountry. If you see riders who have just spent a bunch of time building a jump, don't hit it or ride through the landing. It's rude and will piss them off. The landings don't last very long. The difficulty of landing and riding out on powder is something a lot of us don't understand because not too many of us get the chance to ride or build jumps into it. The skill is perfected with years of experience. It separates the good riders from the best. Stomping into freshies is about the best feeling you can get, so get out there and send it. This is Nev Lapwood, snowboardaddiction.com. Feed your addiction.